All right, welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, we're going to do another crystal field stabilization energy problem here. All right, so in general, you are just going to, once we get to this point, you're going to follow this flow chart, which was taken from uh, Dr. Jason Smee of the University of Texas at Tyler. Just want to give credit where credit is due. And what we're going to do is deal with this complex right here. This is hexacarbonyl nickel 3. All right, so what do we need to do first? Well, if you've been watching these videos, our first step is to calculate the oxidation state of the nickel. All right, let's do that. So I take the sum of all the charges in the complex, which is the overall charge 3, and set that to the sum of each charge in here. Now, you may have to look at this, but let's look at carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has a plus charge on the oxygen and a negative charge on the carbon. So overall, it is neutral. Um, sometimes you can wind up with ones that aren't neutral. So this is zero. There's six of them. And then I have to add on the charge of the nickel. So clearly, this is nickel 3, or I'm going to put nickel 3 plus. That is step one. Step two is to calculate the number of d electrons for nickel 3 plus. Let's go to the periodic table. All right, here's nickel. Now if it loses three electrons, it will preferentially lose the 4s ones first, so it's gonna lose these two. So it has to lose one more, so it's gonna to go to this one right here. So it's gonna have the electronic configuration of neutral cobalt. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has seven d electrons. So the number of d electrons is seven. All right, now let's go to the flow chart. This is step three. We need to figure out if it's high spin or low spin. All right, does, I, does the ion nickel three plus have four to seven d electrons? Yes, all right, so yes. Is it a first row transition metal? Let's go back. Nickel sure enough is in the first row of, this, of the transition metal section. So the answer to that is yes. Now we ask, is it a, is it a strong field ligand? So the ligand is, is the carbonyl or carbon monoxide. And one thing you should, remem should remember is there are three strong field ligands that are very important to know. One of them is triphenylphosphine. The other is cyanide. And sure enough, the other is the carbonyl ligand, CO. So the answer to this is yes. So this is automatically low spin, all right? Low spin, all right. So next thing to do, first we write low spin. Then what we need to do is we need to draw our crystal field diagram. All right, so let's do this. Here is our T2G orbitals. These are going to be our E sub G orbitals right here. I'm going to draw my degenerate energy right there. This distance in energy is going to be from EG to degenerate is going to be 3 fifths delta octahedral. This difference in energy between T2G and the degenerate is going to be 2 fifths delta octahedral. Okay, and I understand now that it has seven electrons in its low spin. All right, what do we do with low spin? Remember that thing I said, if it's, if it's high spin, I fill in these three electrons and then I can go up high and put four and five. If it's low spin, I have to fill in these electrons and then stay low. So there's 70 electrons, one, two, three, and I gotta stay low, four, five, six, and then I can come up here and put seven. Okay, so now I have all the electrons in there. This is for the low spin situation. Now I need to calculate the crystal field stabilization energy. Now remember what I said. This is low spin, so we do have to worry about pairing energy. So why don't we go ahead and do this first. Let's draw the degenerate case. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and fill in seven electrons according to Hund's rule. One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. So my question is, how many orbitals here have paired electrons? Two, these two right here. In the case of the split pattern, how many orbitals have shared electrons, or paired electrons, I should say, and that's going to be three. So that means I take three minus two and I have one. That's how many units of pairing energy I have to subtract. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the crystal field stabilization energy. 
First, I need to take the energy of T2G, which is going to be 2 fifths delta octahedral. I'm going to multiply that times the number of electrons in the T2G orbitals, which is going to be 6. And then I'm going to subtract the contribution from E sub G, 3 fifths delta octahedral times the number of electrons in the EG orbitals, 1, minus, and this is going to be minus the pairing energy. There's three orbitals here that share, have paired electrons and two here. Three minus two is one, so I subtract one unit of pairing energy. What's six times two? That's 12 over five delta octahedral minus, this is going to be three over five, three over five delta octahedral minus the pairing energy. 12 minus three is nine over five delta octahedral minus the pairing energy, and this is going to be for this complex, this will be your final answer, the crystal field stabilization energy. And this is for a low spin D7 complex, low spin D7 complex. So that's going through one of those examples. All right, so now that we've seen a few examples of doing this, um, what I'd like to do now is I would like to go into doing this for tetrahedral complexes. For tetrahedral complexes, it's a little bit different. And what we're going to see actually is that this splitting diagram is actually flipped. T2G will be on the top and E sub G will actually be on the bottom. All right. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to go over that in the next video. Thank you.